Well, we'd just like to welcome you all here this morning as well. And thank you for the opportunity of coming here this morning and sharing our music. And a little later, I'll share a testimony uh, of things that have been happening in my life over the last few years. But we want you to participate now. And we're going to sing a song. The words will be on the TV. If not, we've handed out the words. So let's just sing this couple of songs together. Here I'm 
it always strikes me, even people who don't really believe in God, they all want to go to heaven, don't they? <laughs> so um, there's lots of songs about heaven, but um, there's one in particular that a lot of people sing who may not be Christians, um, and it talks about the family circle being broken. You know, when someone dies in the family circle and they leave this earth, uh, it talks about the family circle being broken, but the hope is that um, we all end up in heaven one day if we're um, in relationship with Jesus. And um, that's what this song is about. So, carry on. Haven't we, especially at our age? 
we'll talk a bit more about that later. There'll be no churches or cathedrals in heaven, because we won't need them, will we? We'll be the church. There'll be no sin, no pride, no greed, no temptation. I'm really looking forward to no temptation. That'll be great. And there'll be rest, but we won't be doing nothing. So if you think you're going to have your feet up in heaven, you might have to think again, because we'll have lots to do. Not quite sure what, but we'll have lots to do. A lot of people talk about um, when we go to heaven, where will we meet you? Well, let's sing about that. Yeah. 
I believed in decades ago are still the same promises that I believe in today. And I haven't lost hope. I don't know how much longer I'll be here for. But the thing is, I'm going to take every opportunity to do God's work, to share His word in whatever way we can. Because not everybody knows of his story, of his message. There's still a work to do for us and for all of us here as Christians. There is still a work to be done. We were going to a church at Helensville and I went back there when the pastor was leaving. And I shared with them that day that if I die tomorrow, I'm comfortable with that. If I die in a year's time, I'm comfortable with that. If I die in however many years it is, I'm comfortable with that. But while I'm living and breathing, I aim to serve God, my God, our God. And I know many of you, He's your God as well. The message this morning is, there's always hope when we have our God in our lives. Going back to the scan, all that black, we know of other people who have had the odd spot in their bones. And quite often they just ride him on the floor in pain, they're in so much pain. We have a doctor friend from uh, Harvey Bay who practiced, and when he sees that picture, he is just amazed that I have no pain. I started to get the odd twinge in the recent months, but we believe that God has granted us a miracle. If he doesn't grant me the, the, the miracle of healing here on this earth, we're all going to be healed. But the doctor's amazed that I'm not um, that I'm not suffering. But I believe that God has said, you know, we'll keep the pain away because we believe that He has a job for us to do, and that makes it easier and more possible. The pastor had done um, a about that just cost me the walking miracle <laughs> because that picture I probably shouldn't be walking. But you know, we're not doing it alone. Not me. Not the end. We're putting our trust and our faith in Him, and all things through Him are possible. And that's what we do on a daily basis. We put our trust in Him and just say, Father, just lead us. Show us where to go. Tell us what to do. Today's message is hope. I thought this next song was relevant because. Um Really, we just lose control when you have a scan like that. What can you do? In, in your human self, you can't do anything, can you? I remember when Gary came out of the, the doctor's room, I actually had said to him, do you want me to come in with you? Because I've, we normally do that sort of stuff together, and we just thought he had a urinary tract infection, probably, because he was getting up every 45 minutes during the night, you know, and then he'd get to the toilet and nothing had come out. <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys have that experience. And um, he said, no, no, I'll just get some antibiotics or something. And he went in and came out and uh, his face was very pale. And I said, what did he say? And he said, he thinks I've got cancer. Oh, yeah, he felt my prostate and it's so hard. He's, he's never felt one quite so hard before. So um, he's referred me to a urologist. And uh, my blood, so he, he went off for blood tests to test, I don't know if any of you know about the PSA test in the blood. If you get to four, if you get to the number four, that's actually quite serious. What was your PSA, Gary? 730. 730 was Gary's PSA. So he thought, I've never seen one that high before in my life, this doctor said, I think, I, I think I'll bring them up and get them to retest it. So they did. And what did it come back as, Gary? Good news, it's only 680. <laughs> 680. So it took us a while. Um, we were very fortunate that we had a, 
a urologist who ordered immediate tests and put him in for surgery within a week um, to have a, what they call a ring ball, which is, uh, yeah, for a hole. <laughs> just to make the urinary issues better, which it has done, so that's really that. And since then, Gary really hasn't had much suffering apart from uh, medication uh, side effects, which makes him very tired, but... Um, the end has all the suffering, all yeah. the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing about it too is that um, in, in the last nine months, Gary has decided to cease treatment because he said that uh, the side effects from the medication, he would rather live a good quality life now than be in bed all day because he's so tired from the hormonal treatment. So nine months we are down the track. Um, two and a half years ago he was given three to five years to live. And uh, here he is. Hallelujah, mate. <laughs> That's our, our journey, but I'm sure you've all got your own stories and struggles. And, and even today, you're probably sitting there thinking, you know, I just uh, find it a real struggle to get out of bed in the morning because we've got all these issues in, in our life, our health, our families, whatever. Um, but what we need to do is to lean on the Lord and that's what this next song is all about.
carry on our talk about heaven. We've talked about what the Bible says about heaven, but I suppose the next question is, how do we know we're going to make it there? That's the big question, isn't it? I mean, most of us might have thought at one stage in our lives that as long as we're good people and we do good things and good works and we're kind and compassionate, that'll get us there surely, won't it? I wonder what the Bible says about that. I was reading about the church at Laodicea. And I don't know if you've heard about that church, but do you remember the verses that talked about um, the lukewarm Christians? You know, the ones that God wants to spew out of his mouth because they were neither hot nor cold? That uh, Revelation 3.20 there that's up on the screen, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Did you know that was actually written about the church at Laodicea, that Christians? So we often think of that verse, don't we, as um, speaking to non-Christians, people who don't know Jesus, who are not um, entered into a relationship with Jesus, and that Jesus is standing at the door knocking, and when you call on his name, as it says in his word, um, you'll be saved. But actually it's talking to so-called Christians. But what's happened to those Christians is they've become lukewarm. The Laodiceans were actually very wealthy and they, were very, they felt very self-sufficient. They didn't really need anybody else. And whilst they went through all the motions, I'm sure, I'm sure there were lots of good, good Laodicean people who did all sorts of wonderful good deeds in their community. But what did Jesus, what, what, did, what was said about them? I wish you were either hot or cold. Because when you're somewhere in between, you're just doing the Sunday thing, and the, maybe you go to Bible study or something, and then you just live your life as though I don't even exist. I'd, rather, I'd like to spew you out of my mouth. That's pretty, pretty graphic, isn't it? It makes me think about my journey with Jesus. And the fact that, you know, what he wants from us is a daily relationship. Uh, a joy that we get every day when we get up and we say, Good morning, Lord. It's another day with you. What do you want me to do for you today, Lord? And he just delights in it. He delights in a relationship with us. And it's when we're in that relationship, we call on his name and we live daily with him. That's when we know we're going to heaven.
He's coming. 